I consider this to be a red letter day in my life. Why, you will ask? Because Milan, Professor Milan Mondol, the, the assistant professor in the Department of English of Narayul Raj College, uh, passed from Bakura University, which is a very new university, but through his hard work, he has come up to this level to organize a very learned webinar. I've been looking at the list of speakers. I was really very, very excited about the kind of academic dissemination that will take place. I really congratulate, of course, the principal, who is the key person in encouraging his teachers to organize such learned exercises. And of course, Milan and all others of the department, I saw the department, it's a very impressive department. I believe that there are more two, uh, there are four teachers in the department, as far as I can remember, maybe more. Uh, but it is really encouraging for me as well to be able to talk to you. Um, however, I shall not uh, waste much time in speaking personally because I know that time is not very uh, uh, time is not really enough to cover this kind of subject. As I said, my subject is rise of the Greek epic with reference to Homer. So that's why I would like to know about the participants. Are my students, are my participants uh, students only or there are also teachers or is it, is it a mixed audience? I'm not sure. Uh, sir, this is a mixed audience. There are teachers of the department and also uh, teachers from outside the college okay. and our students are also here. Okay. Thank you, sir. Okay. Thank you. Uh, in fact, you know, History of Homer's Iliad is the history of a complete millennium. And without considering this history, it is absolutely difficult, I would say impossible, to get a fair idea about this epic. Not to speak of its growth, its development, and other creative factors. Simply to understand this epic, it requires at least a fair idea regarding the history. We know, we are all familiar, I know that uh, perhaps Homer's Iliad is now in the uh, syllabus of undergraduate courses. I know that uh, the book, the first book is there. I'll talk about that later on at the end of my uh, lecture. I actually think that in order to properly understand we require a proper background. And I will try to very easily project that background so that we can very appropriately understand Homer's 
epic, the Iliad. It's a very complex epic. And it's a kind of epic which amalgamates, blends together multiple form, multiple cultural forms. So therefore, in order to, without understanding this historical background, it's not really possible to read Homer's The Iliad. I remember long, long back when I was a student, I, we had to read the entire epics. It was not selective. Homer's Iliad complete, Virgil's Enid complete, everything. And uh, after that, when I proceeded for my PhD, I had to study classical Greek under Father Atma of St. Xavier's College. He was a Belgian French, had a wonderful mastery over classical languages like Greek and Latin. I had to study that as well. And it was always really very, very enjoyable. And at that time, my supervisor, as well as my great teacher, Professor Sen, suggested I First of all, read the history and philosophy associated with a period. So I started with, I remember, I am Finless, wonderful book of history on the early Greeks. At the same time, I read a wonderful book by, again, a classic, that is by Gilbert Murray on Homer's epic as well as the short history of Greek literature. I also read G.S. Cox's book. These books are still there and I believe that our students should consult such books. <clears throat> However, I was talking about the history. I will begin with a contention that goes back to <clears throat> Plato's The Republic. <clears throat> you will see, if you very carefully concentrate on Plato's Republic, which is a debate on the nature and justification of poetry. In Plato's Republic, we find that that Socrates very distinctively discourages the reading of Homer's epics. And he says that Homer's epics give us a main view of the great gods and the great heroes a lowly view of the great gods and the great heroes. The meanness of the gods and goddesses, the lowliness of the great heroes, etc. And he says, why should Homer do this? It's not true. And that's why the epics should be banned from the syllabus of the schools of the academia. Now the question that immediately rises is why? Well, after all, it is not true. It's an epic. It tells us simply it's simply a mythical story and well, in such myths there may be many imaginative stories about the great gods about the great heroes. So why should you bother about that? These are just imaginative exercises and should not be taken so seriously. 
so that's why however much that homer describes such imaginative i mean stories about the great gods and great heroes why should plato find fault with it that is the question that comes up that means the reading of homer iliad and odyssey is proposed to be banned we should not read it because it gives us many false stories but why does he take it so seriously the question is plato uses a greek word mythos traditionally conventionally we know that mythos means plot story there's a very lower form of meaning of the word but the actual essential meaning of the word mythos is history so that's why for plato homer was not myth homer was not imaginative story he was a writer of the greek history he wrote the history of the greeks and especially a history which is burdened with lots of tragedy that's why homer actually was recording the destruction and the pathetic end of a great civilization and society that's why he was just trying to say that homer should have to not write all about all this homer should give us the real history he should not try to give us a debased projection of our great national heroes so for him achilles agamemnon all such great heroes were national heroes and their story a is project presented in the epic that's why it is important for us for us the readers to know about the history of a complete millennium from 1600 bc to 600 bc during this time the epic gradually and gradually originated developed spread itself out disseminated itself in different directions now the question is how can we find out the history is it possible to find out the history of homer's epic what are the sources that we should consult well the critics suggest that there are as many as three very definitive sources to find out the history of homer's iliad in order to properly detect the history of homer's iliad there are three distinctive existing records number 1 the first record actually you know uh homer's history or homer's iliad describes a particular age this particular age is known as mycenaean civilization mycenaean civilization i'll talk about that later so therefore during this mycenaean civilization there had been some cuneiform clay tablets matir faloke lekha che lekha gulo paoa giyeche cuneiform lin 
clay tablets of two clusters. There are two classifications of these tablets. A tablets on these clay tablets we find different kinds of records. Now these two clusters are called linear script A and linear script B. Linear script A cluster is still undeciphered. It's written in an ancient form of Mycenaean language and the second cluster, linear script B, has been deciphered by two professors, Professor Ventris and Chadwick. So Professor Ventris and Chadwick have deciphered the linear script B, all the tablets under linear script B. As a result, we have seen some uh, records relating to political affairs, relating to trade, commerce, etc., relating to certain treaties, relating to some uh, familial relationships and all that, but no poetry. No poetry at all. However, on the basis of such records, we can reconstruct the society. The society that Homer has been describing in the Iliad. So therefore this is the first record, linear script B. This linear script B, on the basis of this, we come to know many things about the Iliad, the socio-political and economic condition of that particular society the kind of society that Homer was describing. now, this is the first record, as I said, and the second record. <coughs> second record refers, I, I mean, establishes or gives way to uh, some Hittite and Egyptian references. A Hittite Vapataki, Hittite Ataku Prachin Akteris. That actually developed itself, became a very strong power in the, I mean, Asia Minor region. They were called Hittite. Hmm. H i t t i t e, Hittite. -es. Now, Hittite is actually had very close connection with with the, with Greece, as well as with some parts of. Asia. So, Hittites and Egyptians have, have left us some references to the Mycenaean society. On the basis of this, we come to know once again about the kind of people these were. These Mycenaean people, these Mycenaean kings, the Mycenaean society, etc., all of these. Mycenae, M Y C E N A E, Mycenae. It actually Greek mainland and Mode, Akta Onchol. Akta Onchol. So, the Mycenaeans, we come to know about the Mycenaeans from this second source as well. Now comes the third source. The third source actually is the poem, poem itself, Homer's Iliad, Homer's Odyssey. These poems are the third resource on the basis of which we can reconstruct 
what happened during this time. Now, I tell you that the period that is being described in Homer's Iliad is the Bronze Age period. Bronze Jug Jaki Balahai. It refers to the Bronze Age period. Now this Bronze Age technically it is called Helladic period. H E L L A D I C. Technically, we don't talk about Bronze Age. We talk about the Helladic period. There are three distinctive, I mean, uh, three distinctive phases: the Early Helladic, the Middle Helladic, and the Late Helladic. Chahuj kotha bolte gale. Prathamik Bronze Jug, Tapre Muddham Bronze Jug, or Bronze Jug at Shesh Bhag. So, therefore, Helladic, but use the word Helladic. In classical studies, we use the word Helladic. H E W L A D I C. I mean, Chatro de Chatro Chati de Jana, Panan Collective Kukura Majavati Bolbu. Now, when we talk about the Greek region, then we don't talk about just the mainland. And mainland, the map is the map. 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 The map is the Tashumi Jokur erect over Nichi Rong. A Hoche, Greek, Greek mainland. The Ami presentation is almost a parina, Tayo Jagarava China, so we do be a key into Ami Motomoti Bolam, Jara map, the Bojo, Tara Dekaneve. Shadow Chatale, the upper part and the lower part, A Nye actor, Greek mainland. And down below the mainland Greece, you will find an island that is called Crete, C R E T E, Crete. And Arakta on Chalache, just close to Greece, Asia Minor, Shomudra Ektu Odike Gelei, Asia Minor starts. That is called Central Aegean. Central Aegean. তাহলে তিনটে রিজিয়নের কথা ছাত্র ছাত্রদের জন্য বলছি আমি বলছি একটা হচ্ছে মেইনল্যান্ড গ্রিস দেন ডাউন বিলো দা মেইনল্যান্ড দা আইল্যান্ড কলড ক্রিট এন্ড সাইডওয়েজ তোমার ডান দিকে সমুদ্রের পাশে সেখানে যে অংশ এশিয়া মাইনর তার মধ্যে একটি অংশ সেন্ট্রাল ইজিয়ান এ ই জি ই এ এন Central Asia. Now, here we found the development of this Bronze Age culture. So, Helladic culture, Jokonamic mainlander Kotha Bolchi, the Konotake Bolchi, Helladic culture. When you talk about Crete, Crete away bone bronze age, the Kon Kota Kamra Bolchi, Minoan culture, M I N O A N. Minoan culture, but that refers to Crete. Crete, they said the Bronze Age culture, Shereke Bolahoke, Minoan. And the third, Aegean, Central Aegean, Jarkotabolam, Asia Minor, that is called Cycladic. C Y C L A D I C. Cycladic. Kalabusavale, the Bronze Age, Age culture, a culture between the Habe. A onshore tate, Jiret Horechilo, Tarmachkane, Helladic culture is referable to mainland Greece, Minuan culture is referable to Crete, and Cycladic culture is referable to Central Aegean. And 
our epic, Homer's Iliad, refers to the Middle Helladic period. Je kahini bola ache, tar golpota hoche middle Helladic period. Takar samushara kota, ebar early Helladic, tar period hoche from 3000 BC to 2000 BC. Eta hoche samayita. Jishu kishte John men, tina ajar. Tina ajar chake dua ajar BC modde, ee aungshota early Helladic. Eta ni aami akhon kono kotha bolbo na. Adhitiyo je aungshota, sheta hi hoche aamadhe mool jayega. That is 2000 BC to 1850 BC. This is called Middle Helladic period. And that is the period when we find the rise of Mycenae as a great empire. Rise of Mycenae. And that is the, this is the period which sees the rise and fall of the Mycenaean civilization. And it is this story of the rise and fall of Mycenae that has been presented in Homer's Iliad. So, Homer is not just a myth. Karun tamna myth se jodi bhalo kore poro, kare bhuye this is jatono Shukumar Sen. Ekta kotha bolle chilen. Shukumar Sen bolle chilen. Ekta essay likhe chilen. Ram kotha malar udo beach. Mane ei je golpo, shay golpe udo beach char pashe choriye pore chilo. Bata shay awai udhe ge chilo. Chobai akhi golpo. Je ru kothar golpo je. Rajkunna ke rakhosh niye chole galu shumud shat shumud taro no di par hoye ta ke rajputro fairy tale element that actually comes to be recreated in different forms like in Ramayana or then in our Iliad. Helen ke churi kore niye chole galu eva ta ke udhar korte shat shumud taro no di par hoye tar ta ke ante galu. This is the myth. This is not the history. And this myth actually uh, somehow hides the actual history. And I'm telling you the actual history of Homer's period. So therefore, we are concerned about the 2000 to 1850 Middle Helladic period. Age of Middle Helladic period, <coughs> this is a very important period. It is during this time. When in India, I was 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 in Similarly, the similar sense of invasion, this invasion uh, ideology is also there present from 2000 AD to 18, uh, 2000 BC to 1850 BC. During this time, a new culture developed. The invaders culture. Era invaders. Ebong eder ki tumna dekte babe, homarid actual APK, they are never called Greeks. Tate ke kakhunu Greek bala hai na. Amra boli. They never called themselves Greeks. Tale humar tate ke ki bole chila? Tumna book one pore chho, book one e, jara chhatro tate ta pore chho book one. Tate ta ache. Aj era Agamemnon, Achilles, Itadi. Who are these people? Are they Greeks? Did they call themselves Greek? No. Era kya Greek na? Tare Greek ko tare kya bollo? Kada bollo? Romans. Long after that, ohu bachor par. A Greeks there ke akraman kore, porajit kore, ta khun tara. Either ke bale era to Greeks. Oder bhasha unujai. Actually, they were called Achaeans. S C H A E A N S. A C H A E A N S. Uh, so therefore, so my dear students, you should be very, very careful about the nature of these people. These were Achaeans. 
Who were these Achaeans? And whom did they invade? Greece to Kali Purichiluna. There were people in Greece. We have only one single reference to the original inhabitants of Greece around this time, and they were known as Pelasgians. P E L A S G I A N S. Pelasgians. This Pelasgian said Kothatar Mani Akmatru Mane, seafaring people. Seafaring people, the Pelasgians. And the Achaeans invaded Greece. Right? They were a kind of tribe. And critics say that this were this was perhaps an Indo-European tribe. Chironic debate about, but I'm not going into that. So therefore, around this time, the Achaeans entered Greece, invaded Greece, captured Greece, and then they became the rulers of Greece, of course, and at the same time, they assimilated themselves with the existing Pelasgian culture. So they got themselves assimilated with the Pelasgian culture. And this is very definitely found in all the pages of the Iliad, this assimilation, this blending of two cultures. This blending of two cultures, the pre-Helladic and the middle Helladic. What did I say? Sorry, the early Helladic and the middle Helladic. Early Helladic, only kichu, middle Helladic era ja anlo, tashunga mishe gache. Back hoye gache. Chegulo amra dekhte pabo. Ami kato unu uda harondi. If you read Omar's Iliad, then you will see, then you will see that there are two kinds of, I mean, fighting. One is the foot soldiers, Podatik Shunna, the foot soldiers running against enemies, killing them, etc. This is the original Heladic, early Heladic influence. At that time, there was no horse. They did not know the use of horse. So, Hurar Babohar Jantuna. So, therefore, foot soldiers actually refer to that early Heladic influences. And at the same time, war chariots. Our Ghura Lagano, Ghura Jute Deva, Sheikh Rothichure, Juddo. This is this is the middle Heladic period influence. This is the middle Helladic period. So therefore you can see that you can see both the foot soldiers at the same time, the chariot race, the chariot, chariot war, the war chariots, the shields, they, uh, they hold the shields. Hmm. Uh, a shield said there are different versions. What are the different versions? On the basis of this, you can immediately point out that this passage was written earlier. This passage was written later. Okay. There you find that he is referring to the shield. Hmm. The shay shield kishire bananu. It's but it's made of animal hides. Oshub chamra diye toiri. That is one form, and that is the most primitive form, and that refers to the early Helladic influence. And in the middle Helladic, we find that it changes because the Bronze Age has come and matured itself. So they are making weapons out of that. So therefore, we have now the round shield, circular shield. So, round shield refers to the middle Helladic period. In other parts, in some other parts, you can see that the soldiers are fighting with tall shield. Tall shields. They are holding the tall shields 
and fighting that refers to the late Hellenic period. So you can see that on the basis of, I mean, dissecting the text itself, we can place the uh, place the time period of the poem. Jamun, in many places we find the references to horse. But horse was not there in the early Hellenic period and horse actually came later. So therefore, in this way, the earlier, the later, all kinds of things actually come to be associated with each other. <coughs> Again, <coughs> another thing, we have to very carefully look at the pottery. We have to look at, look at uh, the fine fine arts. In one particular book of Homer Senior, we find that Helen is engaged with saving, creating beautiful designs. Actually, this is a later, not the primitive savage society. It is a tender art, art, uh, uh, conscious, art conscious society. Right. Here we find, I can refer to wheel. Different kinds of wheels have been described. Some wheels are very rough. Naturally, these refer to the poets who did it. Taking influences, getting influences from the early Helladic period. And then, you know, by the middle Helladic period, they, I'm sorry, I'm not talking about wheels. I am talking about pottery. Pottery. They will know Matir Patru, Matir Bashon, Matir Goyena, Ittadi. So all of these were used to be handmade. So that's why very rough. But by the middle Helladic period, they actually began to create wheel made potteries. Jamun Amadir Kumodra, Akonu Gram, Gramming, Gramming on the Rakaja, or a Gurugari Chakar Motata, Wheeler Motte, Pottery Story Cotton. That was considered to be, I mean, the new Helladic, middle Helladic influence. So many things actually came up, like the fortification of towns, then special kind of building began to be created in the Middle Hellenic period, it was quite, uh, quite a very advanced stage of civilization, and that was called the Mycenaean civilization. So, the rise of Mycenae, Mycenae, the rise of Mycenae can be dated roughly, very approx uh, approximately, from 1500 BC, and it developed and developed and gradually came to be a very strong power in the Greek peninsula, politically, economically, militarily, hmm? but that gradually came to be destroyed by the invasion, by the invasion. So therefore the first invasion came and they were called the Achaeans. Around 2000 BC, the first invasion, that means in the Middle Hellenic period, the first invasion, the Achaeans came and gradually it developed into the Mycenaean civilization. Right. Now, after this gradually, and they were called Achaeans. Who were these Achaeans? Later, Edeki Yama Porvutika Bolchi era to Greek. When a Roman law that the Greek bull. The Sheshebe Shamai Greek bull. Or a Nigerache Achaeans. So Achaeans are Shomun the actor Kothachi. A tick a Shomai. Around this time, at the 2000 BC, around that time, 
I talked about the Hittites and the Egyptians references. In the very beginning, I was talking about the references, the historical references, records. And I said that there are some scattered Hittite references, Egyptian references. Now, around 2000 BC, the Hittite empire gradually collapsed. Gradually collapsed because of its conflict with Egypt. So as a result of the conflict between Hittite and the Egyptians, the Hittite empire collapsed. And during this time, during this time, a, a particular sect, a particular tribe of the Hittites, they were known as Akayoi. A K H A I W O I A K H A I W O I Akayoi and the critics, the archaeologists and anthropologists believe that it is this particular tribe Akayoi that is later on known as Akia Akaya. আমরা একিয়ান কথাটা বলছি একিয়ান আমরা সাধারণভাবে বলি কিন্তু বানানটা তো তোমরা জানো এ সি এইচ এ ই এ এন আখিয়া এই আখিয়ান এটা হচ্ছে এই হিতাইতি রেস থেকে হয়তো এসেছিল নাও হাউ এভার হোয়াট এভার ইট ইস নাও বাই টুয়েলভ হান্ড্রেড বিসি the mycenaean civilization began to tremble because of the huge invasion coming from the dorians dorians are the arctic greek arctic tribe they also began to enter greece and it was a very militant kind of tribe very militant it will destroy everything on its way right so therefore it actually began to very speedily enter now during this time some of the i mean some of the greek city states tokhon kar dine raja rajutto mane hocche dolopati kichu gramni ekjon ei rokom sob so they decided that they should they should invent troy just across the sea because troy is known as the city of wealth and they will bring back that wealth to sustain themselves and and uh, and uh, and uh, somehow destroy the invading grass called the dorians they went there but it became very tragic for them they of course destroyed troy but it was no better for them as well agamemnon came back and got killed by his wife achilles and his friend patroclus died so that's why actually homer's iliad is a tragic story that deals with three things number 1 thanatos greek bhasha thanatos T H A N A T O S. Thanatos means death. The second is time. Bananda, our daily time means what? Time, the shomoy likhi amra time. Sheta year matha yakta rest dita hobe. T I M E time means honor. Honor. Shaman bot time. And finally. Temios, T E M E O S, T E M E O S, Temios. Temios means the selected land or space, sacred to God or sacred to the king. Karmane, Rajju. So, therefore, Thanatos, Taime, and Temios. These are the three. very basic 
situations we have been described in Homer's Iliad. Who was Homer? Ebar Pushro to Tali Homer Lokake. There was no Homer. I'm sorry to tell you. There was no particular Homer. Even in one of the ancient versions, you know that Homer's Iliad was not written in one particular format of language. It's a mix of Achaean, Danaean form of Greek. It is a mix of Ioli, it's a mix of Ionian, it's a mix of Phrygian sort of language. All of these mixed together. Right? It's a dance of language. It's a curious dance of language and it's very difficult to keep track of its footsteps. Very difficult. Jajano on each pore, 18th century, Alexander Poe, Unuvat Kutting Nichilan, M. Joseph Addison, Jodio Boyta Halo Kati Hochilo, Pochil Bikri Hochilo, Alexander Poe, Big Boy Bikri Kore, Shaitaka, Trikan and Gardener, Birad Boro, Prashat Kinevel Chilan, Shobi Tikati, but he was very badly criticized by Joseph Addison on the ground that he did not understand different mixing, intermixing of the Greek language. So therefore you can see that it's a very difficult kind of epic. Very difficult. New Testament juge at a Greek formula like a Koyan Greek. That is easier. <coughs> However, so who was this former? এখন আমরা যদি বই পড়ি একজন লেখক আমার মনে আছে খুব সুন্দরভাবে লিখেছেন একজন ক্রিটিক হি সেড দ্যাট ওয়েল উই অলওয়েজ টেন্ড টু ক্রিয়েট এ ফ্যামিলি উই অলওয়েজ টেন্ড টু ক্রিয়েট এ হাউস হোল্ড হোমার দা হোমার এগেন এন্ড এগেন সেজ ইন হিজ এপিক আই ক্যান নট সি ও মাই নিউজ সো শো মি আই এম ব্লাইন্ড আই ক্যান নট সি হোয়াট হ্যাপেন্ড এট দ্যাট টাইম তাহলে মনে করে না হলো ওহো কবি অন্ধ ইউজ এ ব্লাইন্ড পোয়েট দ্যাটস সি সেজ দ্যাট হি ক্যান সি আই এম ব্লাইন্ড ও গড ইজ প্লিজ শো মি সো হি ইজ ব্লাইন্ড এবার অন্ধ হয়ে গেল এবার যদি অন্ধ হয়ে যায় হাউ শুড ইউ ওয়াক সো গিভ হিম এ স্টিক উ শুড বি কাইন্ড গিভ হিম এ স্টিক সো হি গেটস এ স্টিক অ্যান্ড অ্যাট দ্যাট টাইম তোমরা অনেককেই দেখতে পাবে should have wide beards. ব্রিটিশ মিউজিয়ামে যদি যাওয়া যায় সেখানে একটা বিখ্যাত সেকশন আছে তাতে অদৃশ্য হোমারের স্কালপচার আছে অদৃশ্য ওই একই হোমার ব্লাইন্ড হোমার ক্যান সি উইথ এ চাইল্ড উইথ এ স্টি ক্যান অল দ্যাট সো উই হ্যাভ ক্রিয়েটেড এ ফ্যামিলি অফ হোমার ইন ওয়ান অফ দি ভার্সন ইন ইন one of the i mean early versions of the language ionian version there homer actually is called a collector homer means a collector homer means a collector and there is also another word that is called homerids h o m e r i d s era maniki সেখানে কি দেখানো যাচ্ছে দেখানো যাচ্ছে যে বহু রকম জিনিস মিশে মিশে গেছে এক এক পিরিয়ড ইন ডিফারেন্ট পিরিয়ড ডিফারেন্ট হোমার্স and they were all that their actual identity chilo what was that identity they did not write 
তারা কোনোদিন বই লেখে বই লেখা ব্যাপারটাই ছিল না দেবের সিং দেবের সিঙ্গার্স ইন এনশিয়ান গ্রিক ল্যাঙ্গুয়েজ দেয়ার ইজ এ ওয়ান্ডারফুল ওয়ার্ড কল আইডোস এ ও আই ডি ও এস আইডোস রাইট সো হি ওয়াজ এন আইডোস হি ওয়াজ এ সিঙ্গার সিঙ্গিং দ্য সং দ্য সংস অফ গ্রিক হিস্ট্রি দ্য সংস অফ এ ট্র্যাজেডি under the garb of a mythic story of Helen who does not play any role in the epic. However, so he is an Avoidus. And also, this Homer's Iliad actually is not the complete epic. It's also not the original form of epic. It's a different kind of thing. Actually, it has been said that there are different, there were different songs. After a song, there was a story of Achilles, song of Achilles. Okay, I am a student of Jigesh Karbo. Iliad Kotha Dar Mani Ki. What is the meaning of Iliad? Chattu Dar Ache To. Chattu Dar Ache To Iliad. Oda To. বুক ওয়ানটা বোধ হয় পড়তে হয় তাই তো আচ্ছা প্রচুর লেখালেখি কোন কেউ উত্তর দেবে কি আচ্ছা And that is the name? Uh, Iliad, is, Iliad is actually Greek for poem about Ilium, uh, which is an alternative name. Ilium, I-L-I-U-M, which is an alternate, alternate name for the city of Troy. Absolutely, it was actually the city of Troy. That means that Ilium is the Iliad. I, D, A, D, these parts actually mean song. So it means the song of William. I congratulate you. Well, thank you very much. Let me take Uttu Taga. So therefore, it's a song of the city, city of William. Tale, it is a William Shahurer Gaan. So the kind of tragedy that took place in William is the Iliad. The song of Iliam. So therefore, this Aoidos, and there had been lines of Aoidos through centuries. And the kind of form that we have is not the actual form. The, the kind of form that was there, this is very definitely mentioned by Aristotle, that it was a huge poem. It developed and developed and developed, expanded itself and expanded itself. It became huge. And uh, finally, the librarians of Alexandria, the, Alex the editors of the Alexandrian library cut down to give it the present shape. The present shape that we have actually was given to it by the librarians of Alexandria. They edited this, the librarians, they were very learned people. So the librarians actually did it. So this is the kind of form that we have. And as I said, that there had been different kinds of songs, all floating songs, right? They were the minstrels, avoidos, singers, and different kinds of singers had different kinds of capacity. Someone would sing the song of Achilles, someone would sing, sing of the song of Diomedes, someone will sing of the story of the so, song of Iliad. So it is Iliad, it is Achilles, it is Diomedia, different kinds of songs. All songs put together gives us our present epic. Right. Now, so therefore you can see, also I can refer to another point which uh, I forgot, 
সেটা হচ্ছে আই রেফার টু দে বুক টোয়েন্টি টু বুক টোয়েন্টি টু তে দ্যাট ইজ ইন পেঙ্গুইন ট্রান্সলেশন ইট ইজ কলড দ্য ফিউনারাল অ্যান্ড দ্য গেমস সেখানে দেখা যাচ্ছে প্যাটোক্লাস আজ ডায়েড হি হ্যাজ বিন বেরিড Achilles finally recovers himself from his laments and all that and then he arranges this Achilles is a different kind of Achilles he arranges the funeral and the games all the warriors will now join that games sports a sports a jay jidbe take tini akta kore puraskar debe the reward will be his personal belongings the precious personal belongings khub dami je jinish hulo tini sara jibon sanchay korechen he will now just give away this is the new kind of achilles not that world like not that arrogant achilles but a renouncing kind permissive achilles at the end the shekhan is a bhalo kotha but apart from that he to one of the warriors he gives he becomes so glad that he gives him a lump of iron at tal loha take puraskar dile and the question is why this lump of iron at tal loha iron loha but puraskar kenu it was very precious that means the bronze age is coming to an end the let helladic period is going out chole jacche bronze period the new period is coming up the iron age where iron is more important even than gold iron will give you a strong weapon strong utensils everything will be different so the iron age iron is more precious than all other metals achilles is giving that away as reward so you can see that it is a late addition to the epic someone who is who sees iron because for them it is absolutely impossible to see iron as they belong to the bronze age they can never see iron but iron is very clearly presented in book 22 why because another poet is adding on this so this is how different kind of interpolations two centuries has taken place and that's why this epic is known as monumental epic dhire dhire boro hote arambho koreche it's called the monumental epic because it gradually and gradually i mean develops itself hmm. now i find that time actually is gradually running out ami koto gulo choto choto kotha boleni bole ami eta bolbo inconsistency er kotha bolbo muloto tar pore ektu shomoy thakle book 2 niye dutu kotha bolbo ei amar plan so therefore if you if you study homer epic acha homer epic porano hoy to book 1 দুটোর মধ্যে তফাৎ এখন আর করব না সময় নেই অনেক অনেক বলতে হবে the primary epic a prothom the first characteristic of a primary epic like iliad iliad 
is a primary epic, <clears throat> original epic, like Beowulf. Primary epic arises out of number one pre-literate society. Eta shadharan tathakotito shikhito shomajer epic noy. Eta pre-literate society. Right. That's why poems were never written down. Poems were composed. And poems were sung. Kinki Baddhajantra Bajanoto. Dutu Baddhajantra mentioned Karahoche Vishesh Babe. Number one, Kitharis, K I T H A R I S, Kitharis, who popular Chilo, Tari at a form of Mother Desha Shetar, Kitharis and Forminx, P H O R M I N X. P H O R M I N X for memes. So these are the two musical instruments. And uh, the Aoidos used to sing the song to the accompaniment of these two musical instruments. Right. So therefore, it was a pre literate society. They would not write the poem. And naturally, number two, these were oral epics, Mohit, oral epics depending on verbal memory, depending on formulaic composition. That is Sriti Uddha, Sriti Rupur Mirbhar Kore, a Gaan Gaahut. Amada Deshu, Anik Borobodo Ram, Ramayan Gaan, E Gaan, She Gaan, Palagan, Narandokum Korahai, Tara Kuno Boitoi Parana, Tara Mukher. So this is verbal memory. So it is oral epic depending this distinctively on verbal memory. And verbal memory was quite common in, at that time. In such primitive societies, they had work songs, dance songs, darjes, dithirams, all of these were shorter pieces like this and naturally verbal memory was very common. So therefore they used to do this. They were singers, the guitar, they, they had the musical instruments, guitarists, formings, etc. And very importantly, as a result, their poems were formulaic. It is normally therefore called that such epics are formulaic poems. Formulaic can be because they would always they would always uh, refer to certain words so that they don't have to they don't have to invent anything. So that's why all the epithets are same. All the word descriptions are same. On each jaga che epike, like the Jutter Bonona, She Jutter Bonona, Achilles Shungoja, Agamemnan Shungotai, Sudanangula Partan. That is formulaic poetry. It actually helps them. Even after Kota Shopshuma, Tale Airport Tini Bolen. Aje Kotata. Tokon Akili is Bolin. Tajan Akta Yuadachi. He will always use that Greek Hashai. Hos Fatu. Hos Fatu. So said he. Hm. Ekotate Barba Dabar Kurich. Hm. Elkum Bohu Achi. I mean, a description of battle Bolam, Eta Bolam, are Kotumu Shomusha Kotamu. Shomusha. Lapses of memory. Lapses of memory. Then lapses of memory. Lapses of memory. Uh, there are some minor warriors. Let me give examples. There are some minor warriors. We can refer to Schedio, Chromios. Era hmm. shop minor Jodha. They died earlier, but in later book, 
মানে ভুলে গেছে আমি যে তাদেরকে আগেই মেরে ফেলেছি সেটা আর মনে নেই সো ওয়েন আই এম রেফারিং টু মেনি মাইনর ওয়ারিয়ার্স আই এম অলসো রেফারিং টু দেব বাট আই হ্যাভ অলরেডি কিল দেব এরকম ছোট ছোট ভুল আরেকটা যেমন ভুল বারবার হয়েছে যেমন ডায়াবেটিস অ্যাকচুয়ালি ইজ গেটিং আউট অফ দ্যাট ইজ অন এ চ্যারিয়েট ফাইটিং এগেনস্ট আদার্স রাইট অ্যান্ড সাডেনলি উই ফাইন্ড দ্যাট ইজ নট অন এ চ্যারিয়েট ইজ অন ফুড মানে কখনো ঘোড়ায় চড়ে যুদ্ধ হচ্ছে রথে চড়ে যুদ্ধ আবার হঠাৎ দেখেছে সে যুদ্ধ তার রথ নেই সে মাটিতে দাঁড়িয়ে দাঁড়িয়ে যুদ্ধ করছে আগে থেকে দিস ইজ হ্যাপনিং যেমন আরেকটা বলছি এটা খুব গ্লেয়ারিং পেট্রোক্লাস ছিল অ্যাকিলিসের খুব ক্লোজ বন্ধু তোমরা জানো পেট্রোক্লাসের রেফারেন্স তো আছে এই বুক ওয়ানে খুব বড় মহাযোদ্ধা পেট্রোক্লাস অ্যাকিলিসের খুবই বন্ধু দুজনকেই দেখতে এক রকম যেমন অ্যাকিলিসকে দেখতে ঠিক তাই হচ্ছে পেট্রোক্লাস এই এপিতে মহাকাব্যে যেটা আছে যে অ্যাকিলিস উইল অ্যাকিলিস হ্যাজ এ কোয়ারেল যেটা বুক ওয়ানেই আছে হ্যাজ এ কোয়ারেল উইথ অ্যাগ্রিমেন্ট অ্যান্ড হি ডিসাইড দ্যাট হি উইল নট জয়েন দ্য ব্যাটল so therefore gradually and gradually it becomes so tense that without achilles they will never they, that they will never be able to win the battle so therefore all the great greek heroes came up to achilles and say that he should do something he should now join the war jud de gale bhal then achilles says well they are afraid of me trojans are afraid of me you do one thing petroclus is my look alike petroclus ke to amar moto dekhte pray amar moto dekhte to oke amar je armor ta ache sei armor ta poriye oke juddhe pathi di loke bhoy peye jabe aro to birotto ache so petroclus goes there has a terrible i mean battle ultimately he dies in the hands of hector এবার যেটা বর্ণনা এখানেই প্রবলেমটা সো হেক্টর হি বিলিভ দ্যাট হি হ্যাজ কিলড পেট্রোক্লাস আই এম সরি হি হ্যাজ কিলড অ্যাকিলিস কারণ অ্যাকিলিসের মতো পোশাক পরে অ্যাকিলিসের পোশাক পরে এসেছে অ্যাকিলিসের মতো দেখতে সো দেয়ার ন্যাচারালি হি ফিলস দ্যাট হি হ্যাজ কিলড অ্যাকিলিস অ্যাকিলিসের মতো বিরাট গায়ের বর্ম খুলে নিল খুলে নিয়েও তখন কি হওয়া উচিত হি শুড বি সারপ্রাইজ ওকে দিস ইজ নট অ্যাকিলিস দিস ইজ পেট্রো ক্লাস দিস ইজ হোয়াট হি শুড সে but he never says anything he just says well take this arms armor survey right eta this is actually a confusion petroclus is stripped off but there is no wonder also to sarbukhon bola hocche je that achilles has come to the war tar mane oi ongsho ta sheshe abar dokano hoyeche bornona deya hoyeche tar juddho পরে এবার তার দেহের থেকে বর্ম খুলে নেওয়া হবে ইত্যাদি সো দ্যাট হ্যাজ বিন আর লেটার অন ইনকর্পোরেটেড ইন টু দ্য টেক্সট সো দ্যাটস ওয়াই দ্যাটস ওয়াই দেট ইজ নো ওয়ান্টার এরকম তো অনেক আছে প্রচুর আছে আমি একটা আর একটা উদাহরণ দিয়ে শেষ করব সেটা হচ্ছে যেমন তোমরা বুক ওয়ান তো পড়ো বুক টুকটাকে বলা হয় ক্যাটালগ অফ শিপস সেখানে দেখা যাচ্ছে প্রায়ম the old king of troy is sitting on the rooftop of the palace and there is helen standing by his side then priam says well helen on on the field i can see all the greek heroes 
but I don't know them. But you know them. So introduce them to me. Then Helen begins the huge description. যে এ অমুক অমুক দেশ থেকে এসছে তার বাবার নামে এ অমুক কাজের জন্য বিখ্যাত দেন আই ক্যান সি অমুক ইন দিস ওয়ে গোজ অন ডিসক্রাইবিং গ্রেট আই গিভ ইউ টু থিংস নাম্বার ওয়ান হেল এন্ড গোজ অন ডিসক্রাইবিং সার্টেন জিওগ্রাফিক্যাল এরিয়াস উইচ আর কনফিউজিং নাম্বার ওয়ান he she refers to hyri h y r i e a township but this township was important in the early helladic period earlier it was important but now it has been abandoned so how can she refer to that actually you know there had been two catalog of sheep perhaps or maybe one catalog of sheep mane jodha der bonuna eta bodhay age ekta kora chilo kora hoyechilo seta kokhon when all the greeks decide that they will set sail for troy to bring back helen from troy with this particular idea they all assembled they all assembled at olis a u l i s olis bondo at the harbor called olis they all assembled all the sheeps all the great warriors and there was a wonderful description of all the, all of them that was the original description but when this description is coming here after 9 years juddho na bochor hoye gache after 9 years we find this description so naturally many people have already died many people have disappeared many things have happened dujoner kotha boli one is protesilaus p r o t e s i l a u s protesilaus Protesilaus would not reach the battlefield nine years before when they re- reached the shore of Troy. Protesilaus leapt ashore. Jaj tike jhaab diye mati te naam te hi ghaar benge mure jaya. He died. so he could not come to the battlefield but he was there in the bat- in the olis in the gathering of olis tokhon juddho jatra arambho hocche tokhon to chilo again philoctetes philoctetes could not reach at all in the middle of the journey he had an injury on the leg and it became so bad that it was very cruel but he was immediately drove, driven out of the ship and he was left in an island called lemnos lemnos dike dipe take phele diye ja chole jay he did not come to the battlefield but he is also described so that means it shows that the entire catalog of sheaves entire second book is an earlier composition right so it is in this way that you can see that homer cp is a very complex poem it should be read with much care i i i have just i have just referred to only the basic problems there are so many others which will take about a month ami kolkata bishwavidyalay homer porata homer iliad bachor পনেরো পড়িয়ে গেছে পড়িয়েছে তা সেই সময়তে এই ইলিয়াড পড়াতে আমার তিন মাস লাগতো থ্রি মান্থস সো হাউ এভার হোয়াট এভার ইট ইজ নাও অ্যাজ আই প্রমিসড কত আর দশ মিনিট মতো মিলে হবে কে মিলন 
আমি এই প্রসঙ্গে অন্য কিছু বলবো না জাস্ট ওয়ান থিং দিস ইজ দি বুক হুইচ হ্যাজ বিন ভেরি সিগনিফিকেন্টলি রেফার টু in plato's the republic third book in the third book of republic plato for the first time referred to this text and raised the problem of narration who is narrating what the idea of narrativity the idea of narratability all of these questions actually were raised by Plato long back. Here we, what we find, we find that, that the priest of Apollo in Troy is annoyed because his daughter, Prices, has been taken away by Agamemnon and Agamemnon will not leave her. So that's why the old priest came to Agamemnon with a prayer that he should somehow leave, leave her. But Agamemnon will not do this. So therefore, the priest prayed to the sun god Apollo and Apollo began to shoot arrows for 10 days. This is where the epic begins. For 10 days, the god Apollo began to shoot his arrows against the Achaeans. Right. <coughs> now, here, Plato raises a question. Plato says, how many types of narrations, narrative voices we can locate? There are many, multiple narrative voices in one epical, in one narrative form. So that's why in the first, we find the third person narrative voice where the poet himself describes is a descriptive narratio. It is a descriptive narratio. That's why there we find that he says, well, the priest of Apollo got annoyed. He prayed to Apollo. Apollo then got annoyed. Apollo, Apollo began to shoot arrows against the Achaeans and the Achaeans became afraid and they actually hold a council to do something. So this is Homer's voice. After that, suddenly the narrative voice changes we find suddenly Agamemnon begins to speak. And then again, Achilles begins to speak. Then again, the gods are coming down. They begin to speak. The idea is, what does the poet impersonate? What kind of narrative voice does he impersonate? So, in this way, we find that, we find that there, are, there is a complexity of narrative voices that actually had been raised by Plato, but which was very significantly answered by Plato, by Aristotle in his Poetics, where he says that imitatio, imitation, is not restricted by the plurality of narratio. The plurality of narrative strategy is permitted in terms of the context. That is what he answers. So our students should try to prepare themselves by keeping this particular thing in mind. Was the epic trying to prove that the gods are human made or rather asserting the point that they, if it existed, may be certain. Uh, this, actually, this, this is uh, this actually is a anthropomorphic view uh, of the gods that we notice always in um, in Homer's Iliad. Not to just speak of Homer everywhere in all the ancient epics, we find this. Uh, so that's why there is no question of gods being made by the human beings hmm. uh, or the anthropomorphic view. That is. The, not important, but the important question is that that gods are, I mean, projected with a specific imaginative extravagance. 
there is a wonderful book which shows, which says that there is always an extraordinary, uh, ex extraordinary uh, exaggeration in the projection of the power of the of the gods. That's why the Deus ex machina, gods from the machines, god from gods from heaven. There is always this intervention, gods intervene into the action of human beings and that is always done in terms of uh, in terms of uh, some exaggeration this is the question uh, have i answered the question of gita this is the question this was the question that was put by gita and then there is another question by pronita rai why might hospitality have held more significance uh, in Homer's time than, uh, than it does in today's world. Actually, today's world, actually, this can, uh, what kind of hospitality are you referring to? Why might hospitality, which hospitality? Can you write, please? Ronita Rai? <clears throat> yes, sir. <laughs> Yes. Pranita actually wrote a question. Actually, it's, no, it's not at all important for us to compare today's world with Homer's world. You understand? Because it's not at all comparable. Yes, uh, sir, there is uh, Muhammad Ibrahim Khan who wants yes. to ask the question. Yes, please. Please. Mr. Khan, please go ahead with your question. You raised your hand. Uh, might be there is some glitch. We'll wait for him. Uh, by that time, sir, I was just thinking, I mean, whenever I think of the epics, I always have, uh, I mean, try to ask myself, how come that the tropes, I mean, the epics were from a very ancient world. When, in fact, we do not know much about the uh, trades that were going on or what kind of seafaring was going on all over the world. So, in spite of that, how is it that the tropes are so similar? Like, for example, you see, there is the robbing of the woman of her dignity. If you look at the Indian epics or the Greek epics, it's the same thing. And then there is this these questions about death, about honor, about state and its power. So, how is it? Uh, that uh, it has up, up, up in similar lines in both parts of the east and the west of the world. Let me, let me answer this question. Actually, you know, the world was a smaller world and a permissive world. And uh, as I very briefly try to point out that the story element, the story element, the story element of Helen being Ill, uh, taken away or Sita being taken away, these were all uh, tropes, tropes of fairy tales. So that's uh, all of them are using it in different ways. And moreover, this idea, I have referred to the idea of honor, Mm. the idea of death and all of these, these were part of the ethics of the primitive society. All, the entire primitive society and you must remember which society. It was mainly Asiatic society with some parts at the tip of Africa, that is Egypt mm. and some parts of Greece. That was the world. Right. So that's how you can see that Asia Minor and with some extensions into the Middle East, India, the Indian continent, and then parts of the Greek peninsula and Egypt. This was the civilized world. And they had a similar worldview, a similar worldview. 
that's where the idea of honor the idea of ethics and all that and don't we should not think that they did not have any connection they had very distinctive connections that, that was cultural connection and also ethical connections even religious connections that's why i remembered the in one of the parchment tablets two i mean two kings two kings are taking an oath in the name of indra mitra and varun these were mitanni kings the mitanni kings they are taking this kind of oath again the hitites in the asian uh, in the asia minor region they had also a mountain mother god goddess god or goddess whatever called dorketo which may be another ancient form of maybe durga or something else so that's why you know in this very small world they had similar patterns of thought in different ways i did not even refer to some of the i mean problematics similar problematics are uh, prevalent in yugoslavia in the ugarit i mean provinces of asia minor in if you look at the geographical and cultural i mean mapping of that particular period then you will find wonderful similarity that's why i'm still a student of this i still go on reading and i i i i am always even now i get surprised that i didn't know this wonderful i mean uh, and i i really thank this college for giving me uh, for refresh my memories i think uh, that's all thank you sir thank you dr khan dr khan raised his hand dr. again khan. hello sir you can ask question you don't have to write hello yes tonita roy she is saying yes. something hello sir my uh, uh, the my questions uh, is that one my, one of the most important cultural value that we have been seen in homer's uh, the epic the odyssey uh, that is the exenia a uh, greek concept which has been encompassing the generosity and courtesy shown to those who are far from home so my question is that why might hospitality have been held more significance in uh, his time than it does in today's world sir can you actually um, if you if you consider the question of hospitality the question of hospitality was not what it was at that time at that time hospitality was of course different it was not the kind of hospitality that we have hmm. because you know that yeah, that uh, idea of hospitality can be noticed in achilles for instance if you look at achilles achilles's hospitality that's absolutely different from today's world now today's world will never be guided by the kind of hospitality that they had right it's it's not expected also i i can give you the reference to a wonderful idea from a sanskrit text which is a very common kind of text bachara kubi pore bhottirish singhasan now in this bhottirish singhasanam shekhane dekha jacche raja bhoj has gone out to inspect his kingdom and a brahmin is sitting on the top of a mount and the moment he sees the king coming he says 
I extend my hospitality to you. Raja, apna ke ami obhorto na janachi. Apni amar kache eshe chen apni ashun. You come into the field because your people are very tired in the field. There are fresh fruits. Please collect them and be happy. So that's why the king gets delighted and he begins to enter the land. The Brahmin by that time gets down from the mount and says, well, what are you doing? Why are you behaving like this? Why are you entering my field? Why are you taking out my fruits? Don't you know that it is trespassing? Why are you doing this? And the king was suddenly taken aback. What kind of hospitality is this? So he immediately withdrew himself. But And the Brahmin once again got into the top of that small mound. And the moment he got there, he began to say, O oh king, you are very tired. I believe you should take some refreshments. Go ahead, enter my field, get the fruits, get some water from my pond and be happy. The king said again, once again got into that field and immediately that Brahmin also came down and just the moment he came down, he began to say, why are you doing this? Why are you trespassing? This story ultimately ends in a different note because there was something under the mound that was actually changing his mind. So that's why you can see that long back, even in our Sanskrit text, the idea of hospitality has been presented in different contexts. Right? So this is how it has been presented. But hospitality has been very wonderfully worked on by, uh, by, by one of our very wonderful uh, philosophers, uh, Derrida. Mm. De you, you should consider that also while trying to consider the modern sense of hospitality. Is that all? Okay. Thank you, Thank sir. You. We do have a question which seems interesting from the YouTube viewers. There are a lot of people watching this whole program on the live stream and YouTube, on YouTube. So this is a question which says that, uh, I mean, it's about the climax of the Iliad. Where can the climax set to be reached? Does it really have a climax? Can it be the point where Achilles kills Hector in a single combat? That is the question, sir. The climax. Yes, sir. The climax. Actually, if we read the, uh, that's why I refer to the original text of Homer's Iliad. Actually, there is no climax, you know. Uh, because when it ends, it ends suddenly. And it's not a complete text. If you look at the last lines, then you will see that there are certain dots in order to show that the text is not complete. So that's why uh, we can say that the killing of Hector is the climax, but that is not the climax. Because there should have been something more after this. And what happened after this, we have come to know from other sources, not from Homer's Iliad. In Homer's Iliad, that is not described, what happened after this. For instance, the wooden horse story. For instance, the fire in the city of Troy, that's not described here. We read about, all about this in Virgil's in it. Right. So that's why it's a, it's a, it's a poem which uh, does not really have a logical Aristotelian sense of climax. It's very difficult. Yes, sir. There is again another question, both on the chat and here in the YouTube. So I would, because we are doing the YouTube thing, I would like to do that. Uh, 
uh, I mean, I would like to present that first to you, sir. That is that, uh, yeah, there are so descriptions of so many heinous activities in the Iliad. So, uh, I mean, there is such a such gory descriptions and uh, so many other things. So, why is it that in spite of all this, Greek culture is uh, accorded a very superior position? Yes, sir, that's the question. Yes. yes. In fact, you know, there are many gory, savage descriptions. But you must remember that Homer is describing, not one Homer, but many Homers, as I said, they are describing a savage, pre-literate society. It's not the polite society. So that's why the kind of polite culture, the kind of uh, finer culture that we normally associate the Greeks with, came up much later. It is the it is the it is the primary savage society belonging to the early Hellenic, middle Hellenic, late Hellenic period. It is the story of the Bronze Age culture. That's why you might have noticed, I might have also been struck by so much of descri uh, gory descriptions, descriptions of blood and uh, descriptions of bloodshed and death. But actually, you know, everywhere this primitive society uh, in primitive society, such descriptions are very normal, right? But it actually changes. The idea actually changes when it comes to a polite society. Because Homer Celia does not present a polite society. It does not present a polite society. So that's why the kind of cultural value that, you, that is being presented is absolutely different. So that's why the Greeks are, of course, a wonderful civilization. They ultimately help themselves develop into such heights that comes to be a matter of pride for humanity, as the Indians did also. If you look at the Indian epic, say Mahabharata, say Ramayana, don't you, I mean, witness bloodshed and many other things. And remember, the kinds of the kind of ethics, the ethical values, the godliness, etc. These are additions later on. So that's why we should always try to consider the basic bare history. Actually, what history tells us. That's why I have referred to, first of all, the historical resources. That these are the historical resources on the basis of which we should try to read the epic. Otherwise, it will give us a wrong signal. Thank you, sir. Sir, with your permission, can we take a couple of more questions? Yes, I can. Okay. If we have time, I have no problem. Yeah. Okay, Muhammad Ibrahim Khan, he's been raising his hand for quite some time. Uh, yes. So, Mr. Khan, do you really want to ask something? Um, anyway, he's not speaking. So here we have a question from Anju ba uh, Anuja Basu. How has the Iliad influenced modern literature? And another by Onuradha Paul, that is, does the narrative voice of the secondary or literary epic bear any authority of narration? So here we have two questions. Okay, let me look at the first one. Has the Iliad influenced modern literature? Yes, there are many Iliadic uh, influences in different writers. You can very easily find that out. That's not a problem. Iliadic influences. I'm not saying that Iliad being recreated, but Iliadic influences are there in the form, in the structure, in the projection, everywhere. So it's not very difficult to find out. And Unuradha uh, Paul, the secondary voice or lit in literary epic, narrative voice of the secondary epic. Yes, uh, there also sometimes we find the authorial intervention. 
for instance you can refer to uh, you can refer to uh, Virgil seen it there are several places where Virgil Virgil intervenes into the texture of the epic makes his own comments and so that is also true of Milton's Paradise Lost in Milton's Paradise Lost there are so many places where Milton I mean very uh, carefully Milton makes his own comments so that's why it's 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 easy for them the narrative voice uh, is also there authority of narration yes actually the idea of authority should be carefully considered when i consider the narration i consider the narration in terms of the speaker's authorial uh, identity so that's why uh, multiplicity of narrative voices happens and every voice is authorized when satan is speaking for instance in, in the fourth book of paradise lost for instance when god is speaking in the second book so everywhere there is the authorial narrative voice in terms of the speaker um that also happens everywhere i think that's all uh, any other question um, thank you sir uh, 